everyone, April here. So happy to be back and ready for the August 2021 edition of Power Platform Rewind. We have a lot of Power Platform news and announcements to cover, so let's get started. First up, model-driven apps. We can now have in-app notifications for our model-driven Power Apps. This will show both in the web and the mobile versions. We can make notification and alerts show up here in the notification center and even have what we call toast notifications with a live preview of what the notification is. You will need to make sure that you opt in to show the notification center and these toast notifications in your model-driven app settings for each model-driven app that you want to enable this in. So just go into your model-driven applications, click on the settings option, and select the option to enable toast notifications. And this is in public preview now, so it should be rolled out for everyone to try. Next up is some great news on Canvas components for Power Apps. Now, everyone that watches my YouTube here knows that I'm a huge fan and advocate of components. They are hands down the best way that we can create scalable and reusable Power Apps applications. And there's been a pretty cool change to make these Canvas components even more powerful. Now, to understand this new functionality, we first need to understand how components have traditionally worked. Our Canvas components traditionally have been encapsulated and not able to access the scope of the application that it's actually in. Everything had to go through this gated process of being passed in through the component properties that we can configure. And that's really by design because of the intended use of components of being able to take and build a component and reuse it across multiple different Power Apps in different environments. And enforcing that encapsulation or having to use and rely on those input properties made that process even easier. But what if you don't want to reuse a component that you're building across multiple apps? Maybe you just want to build a component and use it in one particular Power App across multiple different screens, like say for a header, footer, or navigation component. So if that is your intention to create a component and use it in a single app across multiple screens, then we have this new feature to allow access to app scope that we can toggle in our component settings. This allows us to directly access the scope of the application that we're using. And what that means exactly is we can now directly access our tabular data sources, variables, collections, and controls within the host app that you're building the component. So we no longer, if we have this setting enabled here, have to pass in those values through component properties. So it just makes building components easier and unlocks more possibilities. Next up, some PowerFX news. Now we've talked about PowerFX quite a bit here on the Power Platform Rewind Show. We have four brand new PowerFX functions that we can start using today. And all these functions are actually pretty much grabbed directly from their Excel counterparts. The first two are the int and the truncate function. These are both rounding functions that we can use. Int will round away from zero and trunk will round towards zero. We also have two new functions to help us with date and time. We have week num and iso week num. These functions will help us return the week number in a given date that we pass in. And I haven't got around to creating videos on these new functions yet, although I do intend to. In the meantime, though, of course, Shane Young, who has a video for just about everything, does have a video covering these new int and truncate functions. So be sure to check that out. Now for some Power Virtual Agents news, the ability to export and import our PVA chatbots into solutions is now generally available. This has been in public preview for a while, but it's very exciting that now we can use this officially in our production level applications to bring our PVA chatbots into our solutions. In addition to the announcement that this is now generally available, they released a few improvements and performance updates for this. One being that your bots components like your topics and all of that will now be auto added to your solution. And same goes for your skills environment variables. So no more of that manual process to get those added. It's a more seamless experience. Speaking of Power Virtual Agents, we now have Regex support for our Power Virtual Agent entities. If you don't know what Regex is, it stands for Regular Expressions. Now, I actually had a video about this that I released a little bit of a while back on what Regular Expressions are and how we can use those in our Power Apps. Really, all it is is a way for us to define a logical pattern that we can match against some data that we pass it into. Now, this is going to be very powerful and give us a lot of possibility within our Power Virtual Agent chatbots because we can do things with regular expressions like validate that the email address or the phone number or the social security number, credit card, whatever it might be that the user passes into the bot is, in fact, a valid email or phone number of all that using regular expressions. Now, let's talk about one of my other favorite topics, custom connectors. So the exciting news on the custom connector front is we can now add C-sharp code directly in the custom connector wizard. 
This is available in public preview right now. So what you can do if you go into the custom connector wizard, you will see a new option here at the top for code. And this really opens up possibilities for us to do some payload transformations. So doing things like sending external requests to get additional information, to do complex body query and header transformations, handling pagination and things like that. There are a few requirements to using this new C -sharp code functionality in the wizard. Uh, namely one that it only does support C -sharp code right now. And also there's a maximum execution time of five seconds and your code cannot be more than one megabyte. Power Automate Desktop has some new updates for August. The ones that really caught my eye were with Excel. Some of the new Excel actions available to us in Power Automate Desktop is the ability to get your active cells in your Excel worksheets, get column names, delete from Excel, and find and replace. Back to model-driven applications, we have some more integration available to us with Azure Application Insights. There's a new data export option, which will help us be able to directly interact with our service telemetry data. So we can do things like monitoring user activity, diagnosing performance issues and troubleshooting errors, all using Azure App Insights. And we can do all of this through the Power Platform Admin Center. You'll see a tab in the left-hand side for analytics and then for data export. And with this new functionality, you see a new tab for App Insights in which we can go and select this option here to export to Application Insights. For Power Platform data flows, we now have the ability to connect to VNet. This new VNet connectivity feature enables secure outbound connectivity to Power Platform data flows to data sources within your Azure VNet. This will eliminate the overhead of installing, updating, and monitoring your on-premise data gateways for connecting to data sources that are associated to a VNet. This is currently in public preview, and while it is in public preview, you do have access to use this functionality for free. That will change though when it goes GA. Now onto some Power BI news. We have a new Power BI REST API for DAX queries. This gives us a way to programmatically access data in our data sets. This is available now in public preview. Now onto some Power Platform build tools news. There's been a lot going on from a Power Platform build tools perspective with the updates to the Power Platform CLI, the VS Code extension, Visual Studio integration. Well, now we can set connection references and environment variables in Power Platform build tools by providing a deployment settings file. To understand what this really enables us to do, we need to understand what connectors and connections are. A connector is how the Power Platform applications like Power Apps, Power Automate connect to an underlying data service. Connection is what actually stores the authentication and the credentials of how it's going to connect. So a connection reference takes that information, binds together that connector and its connection details with a given app that needs to be able to move between different environments. So to take advantage of this, you'll see a new action in the pack CLI for create settings. There were a lot of new Power Automate connectors added. So we had 13 new partner connectors added to Power Automate. These range from HR applications like HR Cloud to eSign applications like Ascently eSign. We also had some exciting new updates to the independent publisher connector program and some great connectors that I can't wait to get my hands on. We have three new HubSpot connectors, Airtable, Etsy, and Yelp. I can think of a ton of use cases for these connectors. And thank you to all the community members who have been hard at work contributing to that independent publisher connector program. We also have a cool new ServiceNow connector sample that's available there as well that will show us how we can use OAuth authentication to connect to our ServiceNow APIs. The independent publisher connector program samples and connectors and that ServiceNow sample are available on the independent publisher connector program GitHub repo at github.com forward slash Microsoft forward slash power platform connectors. Be sure to check out these great community connectors. And if you have a connector that you want to share with the community, get involved and share that there on that repo. And finally, the last thing I want to share is upcoming here in just two weeks on September 14th, we're having our second annual Powerful Devs Conference. If you're a traditional developer who is interested in learning more about the Power Platform and how you can integrate with low-code technology, or maybe you've been using the Power Platform for a while and are wondering how you can extend it with with code first technology. That's all what the Powerful Devs Conference is about. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, we're all getting a little bit burnt out now with so many virtual conferences, but don't worry, instead of doing a full day event, we've condensed this down to really digestible sessions that are interactive, hands-on, technical demos, and shorter so that it only lasts a half a day instead of a full day. We have a great agenda and lots of amazing speakers. We're gonna kick it off with none other than Scott Guthrie, who's gonna be doing our keynotes. 
we have Charles Lamana and Amanda Silver that will be closing it up for us. And in between, we have some great technical sessions by amazing Microsoft MVPs and community members. That code and custom connectors functionality that I was just talking about earlier in the news here, well, Geetha Sivaselam, one of our Microsoft MVPs, is actually going to be showcasing that, how it works, at the Powerful Devs Conference. So make sure you check that out. It's absolutely free on September 14th. You can go to aka.ms forward slash Powerful Devs Conf 21 to see more information and register. It's going to be a great event, and I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next month for the September edition of Power Platform Rewind. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you later.